what is up guys so I want to talk to, to you about uh, three books that uh, I recommend if you have a chance to pick them up pick them up these these uh, well I know for sure two of them are photographers and then there's a another book where one of the guys is a photographer um, and the third book I'm going to talk about uh, two different authors wrote the book um, but uh, without further ado, let's get into it. First guy, Jerry Yulesman. We talked about him in photography school. Uh, we, we got to study some of his work um, in class. Uh, <laughs> great photographer. Stuff he does, stuff he does in the dark room is, is just amazing. Um, you know, I don't even know if he's uh, if he's still alive or not, um, and I don't I don't know what he's what he's doing these these days. But these these photos and these books uh, and this book was they were all created uh, I think 70s to mid 90s, and I'm going to show you some of them. But what he does is he gets multiple negatives and he will expose the paper in the dark room with multiple negatives and he'll dodge and burn in the dark room and he'll create one image out of several different negatives that he shot film negatives that he shot and he'll create one image and some of this stuff y'all is it's just mind-blowing how he does it in in the dark room with multiple negatives and chemicals uh, he can do way, way, way better work doing that and, and with multiple images than I can in Photoshop. Um, I'm not even a Photoshop guru. I just use Photoshop to, uh, you know, touch up faces a little bit, light and darken exposure, dodge and burn. Basically, I use Photoshop how I would use it, uh, uh, you know, techniques in the dark room with contrast dodge and burn um, lightning dark and shadows and stuff but uh but yeah this this guy is freaking amazing and I'm going to show you some of his uh his his photos here uh, I've got a mark with the uh, little index cards so here's the first one right there <laughs> this stuff's amazing great image great image right there uh, here's another one so this one's pretty cool it's got like a waterfall going down into a uh, into a tree stump and then we got this image right here so it's a big boulder with a waterfall and a waterfall scene. And it's inside the it's inside the boulder. I have no idea how many negatives he used for this. Uh, I would guess easy two or three easy, maybe more than that. Um, yeah, probably two, three, and two or three negatives combined to make this one image. But I don't know for sure. And then here we go. Here's another cool one right here. And last but not least is this one right here. And there's a, a picture of Ansel Adams' face up there in the mountains. So yeah, this dude does amazing work. Check him out. Google his images online. Study his work. It's freaking amazing. Um, side note, on one of Bon Jovi's albums uh, a few years ago, um, he actually used one of uh, Jerry Yulesman's uh, pictures for the front cover. So you can probably Google it and find out. I forgot the name of the album. I actually picked it up. Man, not because I'm like a huge Bon Jovi fan, which I liked them back in the 80s, but uh, but yeah, I picked up the album just because of the uh, 
the, the cover pretty much. Um, I love that image and I, and I wanted it. So, um, so yeah, there is book number one. Book number two, Irving Penn. If you don't know who he is, look him up. Uh, go on to Pinterest, Pinterest and look up some of his work there. Um, uh, amazing photographer. Uh, he actually shot for Vogue magazine. Um, did a lot of black and white. Did color as well. I just love the look of his work. Let's see. You know, well, you get two images in one here. So, yeah. Cool stuff, huh? And here's, okay, so here's some, uh, here's some of his color work. Some of his still life color work. There we go. And get my hand back. Yeah, pretty funky stuff. Great work. And uh. Here's the last one I'll show you. That one right there. I just love the uh, I just love the old film black and white look. The edginess, the uh, the grit, the grain. I just love that look. Uh, you know, I don't think it's real popular <laughs> today with the uh, how uh, perfect and smooth the uh, the digital digital stuff looks, but. Uh, you know everybody's going for that that uh that type of look but man i just love this type of look and i that's part of why i still shoot film and i shoot digital too but uh you know i shoot film for the aesthetic and the process um third book art and fear some of you probably follow me on social media know that i've been reading this i picked it up and started reading it for the second time um great book Great, great book if you're uh, an artist, uh, any type of artist, not just photographer, but any type of artist, and um, you have questions, doubts, struggles, pick up this book and read it. It's pretty inspiring. Um, I'll read some quotes out of here for you. Um, yeah, it's pretty inspiring to me. There's, there's generally no good reason why others should care about most of anyone's, any one artist's work. The function of the overwhelming majority of your artwork is simply to teach you how to make the small fraction of your artwork, artwork that soars. You learn how to make your work by making your work. And a great many of the pieces you make along the way will never stand out as finished art. The best you can make I'm sorry, excuse me. The best you can do is make art you care about, and lots of it. The only people who will really care about your work are those who care about you personally. Those who continue to make art are those who have learned how to continue, or more precisely, have learned how not to quit. Let's see. Fear that your work, excuse me, can't read today. Fear that your next work will fail is a normal, reoccurring, and generally healthy part of the art making cycle. You focus on some new idea in your work, you try it out, run with it for a while, reach a point of diminishing returns, and eventually decide it's not worth pursuing further. Quitting is fundamentally different from stopping. The latter happens all the time. Quitting happen happens once. Quitting means not starting again, and art is all about starting again. Uh, yeah, like I said, this this book to me to me is real motivational. Uh, what separates artists from ex-artists is that those who challenge their fears continue; those who don't quit. Vision is always ahead of execution. Knowledge of materials is your contact with reality and uncertain uncertainty is a virtue let's see I'll read a couple more and then we'll, we'll end the video um, 
The first few brush strokes to the blank canvas satisfy the requirements of many possible paintings, while the last few fit only that painting. They could go nowhere else. Uh, let's see. All right, fear, this, this chapter is entitled Fears About Yourself. Here's a quote that I underline. Fears about art making fall into two families. Fears about yourself and fears about your reception by others. In a general way, fears about yourself prevent you from doing your best work, while fears about your reception by others prevent you from doing your own work. So yeah, um, this book is great. Uh, you know, I think I paid, the, the price on the back here is $12.95. It's worth every penny. I probably would have paid twice that for this book. <coughs> Excuse me. It's not long. It's short. Uh, like I said, I, this is my second time going through it. I'm almost done again, but uh, I just wanted to get this out there and share it with you. Art and Fear by David Bales and T Ted Orland. Uh, side note, Ted Orland um, wrote, had some writing in here about Jerry Uelsman. So uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, go out there and create your art and uh, do what makes you happy. All right? Y'all have a good one. Thanks.